What is the law of conservation of matter? The law of conservation of matter states that matter is not created or destroyed in any chemical or physical change. In order to understand the law of conservation of matter, you have to have an understanding of chemical versus physical changes. A chemical change is a change in matter that produces one or more new substances, like a rusting pot or rotting fruit. A physical change is a change in the form or appearance of matter, but it doesn't turn that matter into a new or a different substance. Examples here include broken glass or chopped wood. For the law of conservation of matter, we're going to focus on chemical changes and how when a chemical change occurs, matter is not created or destroyed. Here's a great example of that. In this chemical reaction, we have a before of calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate and you can see that the mass is 32.50 grams. In the after, after the reaction takes place, the mass is still 32.50 grams. And yet, we have new molecules. We have calcium carbonate, sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Here we have a picture of exactly what was happening with the molecules in the before and the after of this chemical reaction. When you're looking at the items in the before part of a chemical reaction, we call those the reactants. When you're looking at the remaining molecules, we call that the product. And what we're going to look at is how every single element that was in the reactant is still in existence in the product. It's simply rearranged. So we're going to break this apart and look at every single element. We're going to first look at this molecule which contains one calcium and two chlorines. I'm going to place an X over the two chlorine atoms and then I'm going to mark in my chart that there were two chlorine atoms on the reactant side of this equation. And then I'm going to move to the product side of this equation and also put X's on the two chlorine atoms and then list two in the product side of my chart. And we're going to repeat that process for each element on the reactant side and for each element on the product side of this chemical reaction. Back on the reactant side, I can see that I have one calcium atom. I'm going to cross that off and then I'm going to mark it in my chart. On the product side, I also have one calcium atom and I'm going to mark that on my chart. The next atoms I'm marking are the two sodium atoms. I'll put a two in my chart. Then I'm going to move over to the product to make sure that I also have two sodium atoms on that side. And I'll list them here in my chart. We're going to then go ahead and identify two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side. And we'll record those. Moving over to the product side, we can see that they're accounted for. And we'll mark down two. Here in the reactant, we have two carbon atoms. And on the product side, while they're very split apart, there are still two carbon atoms. One is here, and one is over here. So I'll go ahead and put a two in the product side of my chart. The last atoms that we're going to mark in our reactant are the oxygen atoms, and there are six of them, each of these red circles. Here on the product side, we still have six oxygen atoms, although they're very split apart. Three are here, one is here, and two are over here. So I'll mark six in the product side of my chart. So what have we learned crossing off all of these atoms? Well, we've learned that the reactant side of our equation has the exact same number of atoms as the product side of a reaction, even though the atoms rearranged. Nothing was gained and nothing was lost. This is the law of conservation of matter. And no matter what chemical reaction takes place, this will always be the case. The mass will always stay the same before and after the reaction.